Before we get started, if you want to connect one-on-one -on -one with me, Prit Pachu, then visit my website at www.titanathletics.co.uk where you'll find my coaching platform and information on how to work with me virtually using the media app Signal. I offer consultation, coaching, video analysis, and training. And we'll see each other and communicate via our mobile phones, and you can do this from wherever you are in the world. Alright, so this video is on stretching. I chose the following pictures to show you examples of top players and how flexible and mobile they are. It's been a long time since I made a video and my next one was supposed to be an analysis of Kenta Momoda's strategy and tactics, but I haven't been motivated to make that video during the lockdown we've been in in the UK where I live, but I will be making that video at some point. I made this video at the request of one of my online students. If you're as serious about your development as he is, and you're a true student of the game, you'll appreciate that mobility and flexibility play a crucial role in injury prevention and performance. It's not the shots the top players play that make them great. What makes a player great is their athleticism combined with their shot making skills, tactics, mental strength, footwork, and a team of professionals in the field of sports medicine and strength and conditioning, and of course, coaches. There are a lot of other factors, but these are the main ones. I know people like watching videos of how to hit a backhand and how to hit trick shots because these videos seem to get the most views on most badminton tutorial channels, but that's not what badminton is about. There's much more to it. In my opinion, there's no such thing as a great shot. Instead, a shot is made great by the player's ability to get into position which most people couldn't imagine under the circumstances, and the shot executed is tactically perfect. So great shots are a result of body positioning which depends on strength and conditioning and flexibility. So in this video, I'm going to go over a simple routine you can do any time of the day, including before and after a match. To me, these are the most essential stretches a person can do, but of course, there are lots of variations to these. And it's up to you to explore different stretches. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, we're going to start off with the lower portion of the body. So the medial side of the legs, that's the inside of the leg. So your adductors and your groin area. So keep your feet wide apart and flat on the ground, and then just choose one side and lean into that one side, so push downwards. So obviously do both sides of the body. So to the right and to the left. All right, when you go to work on the anterior side of your leg, that's your iliac crest and your quadricep, so the front part of your leg. So make sure your feet are pointing forward, your back heel is up, and then just gently push down. When you're working on the left leg, make sure your left leg is back. When you're working on the right leg, make sure your right leg is back. Make sure your feet are wide. So I'm gonna to turn to the other side and you're gonna see I'm lifting up my arm. So this helps me to work on the quadriceps, the iliac crest, the chest and the deltoid. So make sure your arm is up and you're pulling it right back. So pull that whole top part back and then push down. All right. Now I'm just going to switch sides, do it on my right leg. And now you'll see me here, I'm going to put my knee right on the ground so I can work on that iliac crest, really focusing on that hip. So I can use my hand to support myself against the wall, make sure my knee is on the ground, and then that way I can really focus on the front part of the hip, that iliac crest. And I'll switch sides, do the right side. Here's a front view. All right, now let's switch to the lateral side. So working on the IT band and the shoulder. So really focusing on that side of the hip. So when you're working on the left side, make sure your left leg is behind the right leg. So I'll just give you a moment to take a look at this. So left leg behind the right leg for the left side. And then turn your left foot out so make sure the sole of the foot comes up and then your hand can be on your hip and then you just push. So you push your hip out. It allows you to focus on the IT band. So whatever side you choose to work on, that's the leg that goes behind the other leg. All right, here I'm just trying to get a little bit wider in my feet so I can focus on the IT band a little bit more.
So here's a side view. You can see that the front leg is bent a little bit and that same foot is pointing forward and my whole line is straight. So I'm just trying to keep my back as straight as possible. All right, we'll switch sides here quickly. Okay, now we'll move over to the posterior side, so your hamstrings. So I'm using my hands here to pull my legs back as far as possible so I can keep my feet as wide as I can and my knees on the ground. And then I'm gonna touch the ground and reach out as far as possible and then push down. So you can see I'm just sort of bouncing up and down just very gently here. So now I'm gonna focus on the right leg that toe is pointing up and again, my knee should be touching the ground. And again, just some gentle pushing down. So if you notice here, I've put my hand on my toes and just pulling it back. So that allows me to focus on my calf. Okay, now I'll switch to the left leg and I'll just keep alternating back and forth until I feel like I'm ready for a, a different stretch. So sticking with the posterior side, now I'm gonna work on the glutes. So this is probably a stretch you've seen before where you cross one leg over the other one and then squeeze your knee to your chest. And then as usual, we switch sides, do both sides. So this next one is a bit of a variation. You're still working on the glutes, but you're able to hit on a different angle. So I'm working on my left glute. So my left ankle is on my right knee and then my left hand is on my left shin. And then I'm just pushing my right knee back. So if you want to get more of a stretch and you want to include the hamstring, just put your hand on your knee and push your knee away from you. So your knee is pushing your ankle back towards you and your hand is pushing your knee away from you. So I'll just switch here. And again, my hand is pushing my knee away from me and my knee is pushing my ankle towards me. So twisting the leg. All right, so here's another variation. So um, this one gets the hamstrings a little bit more. So my left foot is in front and my right foot is behind me and my head comes down. So my chest basically touches my knee and I'm just pushing down very, very gently up and down. And here's the side view again, the right foot is behind and the left foot is in front and my head comes down my chest right over my knee and just bobbing up and down. So we hit different points to target different strands of the hamstrings and the glutes. So you can see I'm moving from right to left, sort of bouncing gently up and down, right to left. So that just gets different parts of my glutes and my hamstrings. So this next one is called the seated pike stretch. So it gets the hamstrings, the calves, the glutes, the lower back, and the upper back. Again, just oscillate up and down, pushing gently down towards your knee. Again, here's one that you'll recognize. This one gets the hamstring, the calves, and the Achilles tendon. So pull up on your toe, make sure your heel is on the ground so you can get that calf, and then just oscillate up and down very gently. And then obviously switch sides. And you can do this as many times as you really want. So let's go back to the anterior side. Again, we're focusing on the quadricep and the iliac crest. So it just requires a little bit more balance. Uh, and then you can see I'm just tilting forward a little bit just to make sure that I get the stretch in that uh, iliac crest. So in the front view, you can see I kick my foot behind me and I grab it with my hands and I, uh, I push my heel up to my butt and uh, lean forward just so I can get that quadricep and iliac crest. So there is a good view of it. Back to the posterior side, I just bring my knee up, I grab my knee with my hands and I squeeze up against my chest. So I'm really getting that uh, hamstring and the glutes. So there's a good view. Again, these last three that I've been doing, I've uh, been just standing on one leg. So that's just part of uh, preparing for uh, playing badminton. It just helps with balance and stability and just being a little bit more um, realistic. Okay, so now I'm moving to the upper body. So you've probably seen this stretch or done this stretch. This is a very common one. This is for the posterior deltoid. So your posterior deltoid is um, used a lot during your overhead swing. It's what's responsible for decelerating your arm after you've hit the shuttle as your arm is coming down. 
So although the front part of the shoulder um, is used a lot in the overhead swing, it's the posterior delt that ends up getting stretched out uh, while under a load. So that's why it takes so much abuse. So I like bringing my arm to behind my head after I've brought it in front of my chest in order to get the lat and the tricep. So this way I can do the posterior delt and the lat and the tricep. So here I'm just showing you that the aim is to get your hand as low down your spine as possible so you can increase your mobility. So again, do both sides of the body. All right, so this stretch is really great. This is for the deltoid and the chest because obviously the chest takes a lot of abuse and the anterior delt. So using a table and, um, and then just putting both your hands on there and then uh, dipping your head below your arms and just feeling that stretch. All right, so this next one works on the lat, the deltoid, and the chest. This is a great exercise. You've probably seen this one before. So, but the only thing that I do a little bit differently is I move it around. So I start from the top and I work my way down to the bottom. So that way it hits different parts of uh, the muscles, both the chest and the deltoid, because obviously your muscles are made up of fibers and you want to try uh, concentrating on uh, as many of those as possible. All right, so this is a good uh, mobility exercise for your shoulders. Uh, it's not a, a static stretch like those other ones were or a, a bouncing stretch or a ballistic stretch. This is more dynamic, it's just opening up my shoulder joints. This one's really good for the torso. So you sit down cross-legged and then put your hand on your knee and then turn your torso and your eyes to one direction and um, just give that torso a good stretch keep your back straight and then the next stretch going from down to up and then to the side and then to the other side this one you want to take nice and slow obviously um, you don't want to injure your neck that's very easy to do in these kinds of stretches and also use your hands to put a little bit more pressure on your neck and then some neck rolls So to finish, this is more of a overall body uh, stretch mobility exercises. So this is a butt to heel squat with my arms uh, above my head. And then the next one is a butt to heel squat, but I've got my arms inside my knees and I'm pushing my knees out in order to get a good stretch in my groin area and my hamstrings. Here's a side view again, just pushing those knees out as much as possible. And then if you're like me and you've got some um, a soreness in your knees, some stiffness, you can uh, massage around the knees. That always makes me feel better before I play. And then here's a, a standing pike position. Again, a good stretch to do. You can do a little bit of bouncing. It gets the calves, the hamstrings, the glutes, the lower back, the upper back. And then I'm just grabbing the back of my legs and just pushing my head as close to my knees as possible. Just getting as much of a stretch as possible. And then another butt to heel squat. This time my arms are stretched out, out in front of me just to get my upper back. Here's the typical calf stretch that you've, you probably all know. Keep your heel on the ground, keep your legs straight. And then this one also gets the Achilles tendon. So putting it up against a wall. And that's it. Again, don't forget to visit my website at www.titanathletics.co.uk if you want to work with me one-on-one. -on -one. Thanks for watching.